a pier for astrophotography is a great thing. It's far more stable than a tripod. It cuts down vibration very quickly. And also, if you can keep your mount on it, it'll leave you permanently polar aligned. So in this video we're going to take a look at pier construction and hopefully all you need to know. When I made my pier, I was very lucky in that all the materials used in it were absolutely free, even the concrete. Basically, I live on a farm, the farmer is a hoarder, and all the parts were here. Now that's not going to be the case for most of you, but even so, this type of construction is still a good low budget build. Now I made this and I didn't take any footage along the way. A couple of photos is all I have. And we'll go into that a little later. But first of all, let's take a look at what's regarded as a proper off-the-shelf pier. Now this sort of thing hasn't just been knocked up in some fabrication shop. It has been engineered to absolutely minimise vibration. But to get the best of it, you're going to need its own large concrete isolated foundation along with the fixings and chemical anchors and what have you to do it justice so yes way out of my price range so let's take a look at some DIY options here firstly the basics of a pier you need a good solid base in most cases, a concrete foundation dug into the ground. A solid pier, firmly attached to said base. And up top then, you're going to have some sort of adapter onto which you can fix your mount. When I looked for ideas online, I quickly came across what's called a Todd Morden pier. This is probably one of the most budget builds. It follows those guidelines and simply uses concrete blocks as the pier construction. It is important with this type of build to not use mortar as you would normally with concrete blocks, but instead to use some sort of adhesive. If you yourself choose the Todd Morden route and use these concrete blocks, I would recommend that you seal the blocks because frost and ice can deteriorate those. For DIY piers it appears that the most common option is the one where you take a pipe and fill it with concrete and rebar. This can be a very nice pier build. Ideally you're looking at using 8 inch pipe. As you can see here Glenn from the channel Astrobloke has built some fantastic piers for his as yet unfinished fantastic looking observatory. For these he's using 10 inch metal tubes with concrete, rebar, isolated, big foundations, the works. So literally the foundation is separate from the foundation of his observatory itself. So as he walks around it doesn't transfer Going up the middle of the piers, he's even put some ducting to run the cables up the centre of the piers. It really is a good build. And still, it runs along the same lines as my own. It's very cheap in its construction. You should find many videos online showing step by step how these piers are built. I did come across one warning of going a bit too thin with the pier construction. Chris from Astro La Vista once posted a video saying basically learn from my mistake where he initially used only 4 inch pipe and because of the height of the pier and all it ended up a little bit wobbly. He did fix it, he made it wider and uh, is continuing to this day to use it successfully. So all in all it's a good construction. 
Now, taking a look at the top. Basically, you're going to need some sort of pier adapter to be able to fix your mount onto this pier. You can buy pier adapters for certain mounts, and I opted to just use the top of my tripod as it's already made for the job. So I literally just took the legs off my tripod and I fixed that tripod head to the top of the mount. Now this is fixed from underneath, which is why we have this construction of two plates and threaded bar at the top of the pier. You will find some hate for this online, it's called a rat trap. And people say this introduces flexure. But in my experience, this, this is negligible. I'm using 15mm steel plate, 16mm threaded bar. That threaded bar is kept to a minimum height, which is just enough to get that bolt up underneath to fix the mount to it. Now, while some people argue that this introduces flexure, I would argue that that's a whole heap better than my tripod was. I'm not looking for perfect, I'm looking for a vast improvement, and that is what I have achieved for nothing. And my scope is a heavy scope too. It's like 9 kilos without a camera or anything on it. So I see no problem with this type of construction. Obviously if you're using really thin bolts and they're long, then yes, it is going to flex some. But when I was using my tripod, um, trying to take some planetary pictures with a phone adapter and all, just touching the capture button on the phone would make that image wobble for 13 seconds. I counted it, well, I had to because I only had a 10 second countdown. And I think I was doing Saturn at the time and Saturn was just wobbling about as it came in onto the screen, like I said, for 13 seconds. I tried the same thing post pier and those wobbles died down within one second. So yeah, big difference. So taking a look at my own pier build, I actually used a six inch plastic drainage pipe for the main pier construction. It has rebar going through the concrete and down into its foundation but the foundation in mine is different from most in that I could not dig a big hole in the ground and put concrete foundations in there because the ground does not belong to me. What I did was I used a big old truck tire, actually a grain trailer tire and filled that with concrete with rebar sticking out and then the pier construction above. This pier can be moved, albeit by forklift truck, and you may be in the same position where you can't dig into the ground because you're renting or whatever. So this could be a solution for you as well. Another great idea I saw was in a YouTube video. I'll just sort of flash it up on screen so you can look it up yourself. But he's basically used a precast concrete bird bath and turned that upside down and then put his adapter on top of that. I think that's a brilliant idea. It's worth checking out if you're renting. With my using the big old truck tyre as the foundation there, it's something that I would have to walk around and give quite a wide berth so as not to kick it while in use. But um, I've actually kind of built it to a height to look over the barns and what have you here. And have had to also build a platform to go up and over that tyre. But that's for another video. This has been my first actual content video on this channel. And I do hope it helps someone out there. I also hope in subsequent videos I start sounding a bit less wooden on the mic. But hey, I'm new to this. And of course I've got to ask that you subscribe to the channel. Please like the video, comment on it, it all helps the algorithm get me found on YouTube. 
and to help lift this channel off the ground. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.